Welcome to Listen by Jean Ginsberg. This audio experience and podcast is all about social media, digital marketing, entrepreneurship, and interviews with top entrepreneurs in the digital and social space. I am your host, Jean Ginsberg, digital marketing expert, number one best selling author, and award winning entrepreneur. I will be sharing with you strategies, tips, and tactics on how to grow your business and your social media following. Thanks for listening. Hey everyone, Jean Ginsberg here and welcome to another episode of Listen by Jean Ginsberg. And today, very special guest, someone I've known for actually for a long time, probably several years through one of our entrepreneur programs, uh, Polk and Young. How are you? Doing very well. Thank you for having me. Yes, um, we have known each other, I don't know, like two or three years probably through the Young Entrepreneur Council and also now through uh, the Young Presidents Organization that I recently joined and that you've uh, been part of for a while. And that's actually how we got connected recently. And I'm very excited that you're on the podcast today. So uh, the first question I always like to ask our audience, uh, our guests is to kind of give our audience some context to tell us, tell us about your background. Sure. Um, I mean, I guess I like to think of myself as a serial founder. I was that kid growing up that would sell candy to my classmates and friends. And so I've always been interested in like businesses and other ideas. Uh, but when I graduated from school, I, I didn't think I was ready. So I took on a job of a cosmetics company. I wanted to work for a consumer packaged goods company to really understand how to market to mass audiences and was pretty happy there for a few years. But I think what happened and what kind of steered me back towards founders and entrepreneurship was just one day I went for a routine um, performance review and I was talking to my manager about what my career path was. And uh, she let me know she didn't actually think that um, I was going to be part of the leadership track there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it turned out to be a blessing because I don't know how long I would have stayed otherwise, but that was a really good opportunity for me to evaluate, okay, what do I want to do? How um, I could try to change her mind, but I think it's a lot easier to be to take control of my own destiny. So that was the opportunity I took to dive back into the world of startups. Mm. And I moved, packed up, moved from at the time I was in Montreal to Silicon Valley, and then I've been starting tech businesses since. Wow! That and how long have you been a founder? Uh, over a decade. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, I know I had a similar experience. It was like the last job I had, my last full-time job. Um, same thing, you know, it was like I had my performance review and it was like, okay, I thought it was, you know, I thought I was like, it was, it was felt kind of strange because it's like somebody else had your, had control over your life or your opportunities or your, um, you know, just what you wanted to do in the future. And it felt almost like very um disheartening and also very like uh, like yeah like you don't have control of your life and so that's I think one of the reasons why I also I had that kind of moment too where I wanted to start my own company and I was like screw this like uh, I felt like I was doing a good job and now you're telling me all of this and like and I'm not part of the leadership track and like I'm not you know so yeah I can I can totally relate to that and I had that moment as well um and it was it was sad to see that you know, other people have control over your lives, that, over your life that you, you know, you thought that you did, but uh, there's a lot of, I guess, cooks in the kitchen as, as you will. Um, so I, I appreciate you sharing that because I think a lot of entrepreneurs probably have that experience too, where they're like, Hey, I, I, you know, I want to have control and I want to, you know, I want to make sure I'm, I'm doing well. And also just, you know, I want to be in the leadership track or whatever that might be the next step. So um, so tell us about your uh, most recent business. Sure. Uh, my most recent business was a company called Absolute Games. It's like a casual mobile games business. And our flagship game was, was a bingo game. Uh, it's a free-to-play game. Most people, when they hear that, they're like, so how do you make money? And um, it's interesting because like those kinds of games, get, you get to play for free. And then if you want to play for longer than, say, 20 minutes, uh, that's when you can purchase tickets if you want. Right. So we, we grew the game to over 25 million users, and I ended up selling it about a couple of years ago. Worked on it for a few more years and just stepped away uh, in December. Well, that's exciting. So uh, nice exit um, to, you know, to continue on your career path. And now what are you up to in terms of next steps or next ideas? Yeah, it's interesting because it's been, I was working on it for so long. Like, you know, when you have a goal, you're so blinders on focused 
Yeah. So this is an interesting period of blue sky thinking. One of the pieces of advice I, I got from consistently over from a number of different founders is like, don't rush into the next thing. Take the time, like you want to recharge and put yourself in the right mind space to, to see what's next, to keep your, yourself open to ideas. So I'm, I'm consciously trying to do that, just trying to understand new technologies, kind of peripherally see what's happening in, in the games and tech in, industry, but just kind of allow uh, what comes to come. Yeah, I can see that also going the other way, right? Being like, well, it's been a year and I still haven't made a decision about what I want to do with my life. So I can see that right, being with myself. Do. Yeah. <laughs> to be like, oh, well, uh, the year has been nice. I've had a lot to think, but hmm, what's the next step? <laughs> That's what they all say. that like, you've got to give yourself time, but you're going to feel that urgency because you're so used to executing. It's like this weird void right. uh, that, that I struggle with, but I'm, I'm trying to give myself time. But uh, do you feel that struggle? Do you feel that void now? I do. Yeah. I mean, like, you, it's weird to, like, for years you have a team, like, you have people you're taking care of, and all of a sudden you're like, well, it's me. It's whatever I want to do. Right. Well, I mean, there's always opportunities to help other businesses or to be an advisor, right? I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to, it's kind of like retirement, right? You don't have to necessarily retire. <laughs> you can still be part of the ecosystem, you know, uh, with your experience in, uh, technology and selling businesses even you know i mean that's something that uh a lot of opportunity to uh give advice right to other to other founders or to other startups so there's a uh, there's a lot and then, and then also you can maybe find you know ideas as you start talking to companies and being like oh well that's interesting or maybe that's you know an angle to look into so um yeah i kind of uh, like p part of it is like i thought about what would be retirement like if i were to let's say retire in like i don't know let's say the next few years or five years. And uh, I was like, I don't know if I'd ever want to retire. Like I probably would want to continue an advice. No, same. Yeah. I, I love the idea of being in it. And I agree with you. Like when I got started, so many founders and so many people were so kind and gracious with their time and advice. So right. I try to tie wherever there's opportunity to, yeah. to calls and, and help out where I can. Absolutely. Yeah. Same, like lifelong work, like it's not a job if you enjoy it. Yeah, what you're exactly. I love our freedom to, to do yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and just retirement has changed so much, right? Like, I mean, yeah, back in the day, like you retired because, you know, maybe you had a physical job, right? But now, you know, we don't really have physical jobs anymore. And so it's like, and potentially could be, you know, we could be all be living very long, much longer lives than what our parents had lived. And so what do you do? And, you know, you're in the prime of your of your thinking, right? Maybe in your sixties or something like that. And you don't really want to retire because you're, you know, you've had so much experience and you want to continue on, on giving value and also maybe having businesses or whatnot. So I've thought about that many times about like, what does retirement look like now or in the future for like our generation or even the younger generation? Now, how does it change in yeah. Yeah, what is retirement? Like if you're living your best life already. Yeah. But... Why retire? <laughs> like. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I don't ever see myself retiring. I just always think I'm always going to be um, adding value in some capacity, right? Or doing something that I'm interested in or advising companies. Um, so yeah, that's uh, <laughs> just a total side note, you know, as, uh, as we're having these conversations. So. But it's fun to do because it's good. like, what are you working for? So understanding right. the end game. And if you realize like what you have today is what you want in the future, that really changes like what your motivations and how you structure your, your long right. and short term goals. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Um, so that's, yeah. And so one of the other things I wanted to talk about was um, our connection through YPO. And um, you've been very gracious in helping me kind of walk my way through. I just recently joined the Young uh, Presidents Organization for anybody on the call or on the podcast who's not familiar. Uh, what was um, the driving force to join it for you in the beginning? Sure. The person who was responsible for bringing us in when we sold our business was a YPO member and he just said it was transformational. And then once I was aware of like the organization, like my ears were like out to hear it. And I heard so many people say over and over this, just how great the experience is. I think the main part of what's awesome about YPO and a number of other organizations have the same, I understand EO does as well, is, is the forum, like going through as a, as a business owner, I mean, it's such a roller coaster adventure. Like you have highs, you have lows. And sometimes it's really difficult to remind yourself that other people are in the same shoes. 
and what I really like about YPL is that it creates a safe environment because like the whole mantra is like nothing, nowhere, never. Um, you come in, you can share like what you're feeling, whether it's business or family or like personal, because all of it's interconnected. Like if you're not, if you've done, if you're not got a strong base personally, that's going to impact your business. And if you're fa- your family or your relationships are struggling, that's going to impact your business too. So it's a safe place for you to discuss anything that's on your mind. And it's a no advice um, exploration zone for people to share what they went through, how they felt when they're in similar situations to help you figure out how to work that work through anything you're, you're going through. This podcast is brought to you by the Digital Marketing Method Monthly Group Coaching Program, your methodology for growing your business and your social media following. Join me and my group of supportive entrepreneurs and learn how you can grow your business and your social media following, where we cover topics such as Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, email marketing, and so much more. Go to dmgroup.online, dmgroup.online. Online. Yeah, and so what's been your experience like now that you've joined? Uh, you've been around for a couple of years now, right? Yeah, two years. You said? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I've really enjoyed meeting people. Like before that, I was so focused in tech, so most of my connections were were in tech. But YP was very broad. Like they've had people in construction and real estate, in um, angel investing, in uh, consumer products and vending so really really different industries but the challenges are universal yep, and I really like that like yeah. yep yeah and um would you want to share a little bit about your forum experience um how has I mean any examples of how forum has helped your business yeah it's interesting for me like I'm still excited to see what a normal forum experience is like because I mine was set up during COVID so we were fully remote and I, I've heard it's so powerful to meet in person. Uh, my forum's great. Like they, just so many random things have happened during COVID that you wouldn't expect. And so right. just having them guide us through like, okay, here's your thing. Here's my thinking on this, or I've had a peripheral experience. Like we had some legal questions and they were help, able to point us to some really good contacts for advice, but also like give a good perspective. Cause like, you know, when you're going through it emotionally you might be so caught up that you're not thinking logically. And so having a third party hear it out, you know that it's a safe place and then point out, okay, like c- calm down or, you know, here, here's other other considerations. Right, awesome. right. Yeah, I, I've heard such great things about forum and that's something that is, um, I guess, native to uh, YPO, Young Presidents Organization, but also EO, which I think a lot of, uh, maybe a little, uh, maybe more of a b- bigger brand just because it's a little bit easier to get into EO. So I think more people know about yeah, entrepreneurs organization, but yeah, it's also forum is also a big uh, part of that as well. Um, and I've, yeah, I just heard so many good things about it. I agree. And I think like for founders, like it's, you can still do the same thing on your own, like even not in an organization, like if you got a group, good group and just right. set up some rules, like it's the idea of experience sharing. I think that's the most powerful. Yeah. But it is, I feel like for me, it was very hard to find that group until I started joining these organizations because most of my friends and my social circle are not uh, founders. And so it was much more challenging. I don't know about your social circle, but yeah, for me, I mean, a lot of, most of my friends have normal jobs. You know? <laughs> and uh, so obviously it's a different mindset, right? When you're like, you know, I have a job and that's great. You know, everybody's got their calling and everybody's got their path. But for me, uh, I decided to go down that path and it was, yeah, it was definitely lonely for a while. It was um, I was, I feel like I was kind of walking on my, by myself until I started joining these, you know, I joined YC, which is the Young Entrepreneurial Council, which is how we met, uh, about four years ago and then EO and then, and then YPO. So yeah, um, for me, it was, it, it, I started to, yeah, get to, get to know more of us, the founders through these organizations because they're all founder organizations. So. No, I agree. Like it definitely shortcuts. Like I had to resort to like cold calling people because I'm like, you seem like a founder that seems cool. Like let's do coffee. <laughs> let's do exactly. coffee. Like friends are, don't always go the same path. Right. Yeah. I mean, so often, uh, yeah, but just, you know, people let you known for a long time They're you know, they just have normal day, day jobs, which is, you know, again, that's, that's, that's perfectly great. Uh, but sometimes you're just like, you know, I, I want to talk to someone who has had a similar experience or also like, 
there's so many people in YPO now have graduated, let's say to YPO gold, which is, I guess, the next step, you know, if after a certain age, you, um, ha- you know, you go down that path and then, but have so much, you know, wealth of knowledge and experience from being in YPO and managing their own business or, you know, being, let's say, a managing director of a company or whatnot. So, um, yeah, great For learning sure. experiences. <laughs> It's like you don't know what you don't know, and that's right. what's really awesome about having like some of the some people like a few steps ahead of us who can point out, hey, you know, this is coming in your path. Like maybe start thinking about like succession planning, or like yeah. if you want to, like how do you set your company up for that, or you know, for what's your legacy going to be? How do you set that up? So no, right. that's been really interesting and awesome to have access to. Yeah, that's something that I've been thinking a lot about lately. It's like the succession plan for uh, for my company, hiring a CEO to replace me eventually in the next few years because, um, and so I've been building on my team and having levels of my team. So then the next step is, um, yeah, to hire someone who will replace me. <laughs> Which, uh, did you go through that process when you sold your company? I did, yes and no. Like we were, uh, we grew a ton since we were part of the company. So we had some roles that were already transitioned and some that were not so it was it was an interesting process to go through because it's your baby for so many years so like you've just got to like trust at some point and like take that leap steps at a time and uh so that's actually been one thing i've, I've been very pleased about is since i've left uh I've, I've stayed in touch with a lot of team members and it's been right. so rewarding to see them like embody like a lot of the principles we cared about like empathy for the customers right. and product quality so i'm like yay you guys did it yeah, I, I hear so many times when like startup founders sell and then leave the company. It's like, oh my God, the company has now been driven into the ground. <laughs> and maybe not so from a revenue perspective, but from a cultural perspective, a lot of times I hear that. So. I've definitely heard, and maybe that's not a bad thing. I've heard a number of stories where that happened and the, comp- the founders were able to buy back their business and oh. rinse, repeat. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, I've heard, I mean, I've heard a couple of stories about buying back the business, but most of the time it's like, well... I'm done as the CEO and I've, you know, served out my two years after the sale and, and it's like, well, good luck. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear that your organization is still has, you know, has still those core values that you instilled um, when you first started the organization. So um, I'm very excited about what you're working on, you know, uh, blue ocean strategy, right. Moving forward. Um, so many ideas, so many thoughts, so many opportunities, right. To think about what's the next, What's the next step? Um, And then the last question I always like to ask before we wrap up is what is your prediction for your industry? Uh, Or it could be specifically your industry. You know, if you want to talk about technology and gaming, Uh, it could be self-driving cars or AI or robotics or going to Mars, Uh, anything that's top of mind or retirement. You know, what's your retirement (laughs) going to look like in the next, you know, 10 to 20 years? Uh, Anything that's top of mind for you? uh, I always love to hear what people want to share. Sure. It's really interesting because it's so hard to predict where industry is going to go. Like I had no idea some of the tech and some of the things that are available now. But I think one thing that just even seeing the trajectory so far that I'm grateful for is just how much technology has enabled like rapid testing of concepts. Like I think about what you had to do when you started a business, like let's right. say 10, 20 years ago, like you had to find a lawyer, you had to like sign up for expensive like software tools, you had to you know, hire full-time staff. And now like there's so many tools to just test things fast. And I feel like that's the trend. Like things are going to get easier to do. All the tools are going to enable you to focus on like what what idea it is that you want. And then I guess on the flip side of all, I think about what's going to stay constant. And I, I think our need for like connection and our need to feel like we have a sense of purpose, like that whatever craziness happens for us in the future, I feel like that'll be a constant. Yeah, I totally agree. It's always going to be about people and purpose, right? I mean, that's always going to be a constant. But technology, yeah, I think, I mean, it's so true. Like, I don't think I would have been able to start my business if, like, I had to abide by the rules of, let's say, 10, you know, let's say, well, maybe not 10, but let's say 20 years ago when it was so expensive to start a business and there was just a high barrier to entry at that point because, yeah, like, you had so many upfront costs. It was almost like starting a, like, a retail shop, right, where you had to, like, but you know, get a space and get like full-time employees and all of that. And like, I was able to start my business by myself and 
maybe had some help in the beginning. You know, I, I hired some virtual assistants in the beginning and I was able to scale my business, but at the same time, keep my costs low um, to the point where it is now, which is crazy. Like, uh, you know, it was me by myself who started the whole thing. And so, yeah, I, I can totally relate to that because yeah, I think it would have been much higher barrier to entry to start, uh, to be an entrepreneur. And so entrepreneurs should be so happy now because uh, now it's so much cheaper and so much uh, less, you know, such a short, small barrier to entry to start a business. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, this was great. I love talking about, of course, entrepreneurship and technology. Um, last question is how can our audiences get in touch with you? You know, like maybe on LinkedIn or something like that. I can be found on LinkedIn. Happy to connect with anyone there. I have a super outdated website, pokingyoung.com, that I've been meaning to update. So maybe this is the motivation to do so. Ah, there you go. Um, awesome. Well, thanks so much. This was great. Really appreciate your time and uh, for being a guest in the podcast. And yeah, would love to have you again when you have your new venture going. Thank you so much. And I've enjoyed being on the, on the podcast.